Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms So this is like the part 2 of this entire data structures and algorithms course which we've started recently Technically this is the first video because this is where we actually start with the tutorials the first video was just all about the entire course and the prerequisites and the course details as in what all things we are going to be covering If you have missed that do check it out I'll drop a link in the video description but in this video we are going to be answering one of the most important question that what is a data structure and more importantly why do we need data structures so as you can see we will be answering three questions or three parts that is definition of data structure as in what exactly is a data structure why do we need a data structure and at the end we'll also see a example so we'll use our digital blackboard to understand how exactly data structure will help us and where exactly it is used so with that being said let's get started make sure you watch this video till the end So starting off with a little bit of theory on data structure as in what exactly is a data structure. So data structure is one of the most fundamental subjects in computer science and I'm pretty sure I've already talked about this in the previous video tutorial also and the reason why I'm reiterating this is because more than knowing a programming language nowadays it is very important that you understand data structures and implement algorithms based on these data structures. And this comes handy especially when you are into development and programming domain. where you build efficient software systems and application now the word efficient is very important and we'll talk about it as we move ahead now the technical definition of data structures which i took from wikipedia is in computer science a data structure is a data organization management and storage format that enables efficient access and modification now this is not really that difficult to understand if you break it down so basically data structure is a data organization which means you are organizing the data comma management which is you are managing that data because obviously we have lot of data if you consider big big companies like google amazon facebook they have gbs and gbs of data which they are collecting every single minute every single hour right so you need to manage that data also and then comes the storage format so in what format is it stored and that format of storage should be efficient so that we can access it easily or perform some modifications easily right because let's say you have a million records but you are not able to find out that one single record quickly then what good is your storage format right so that's where data structures come into picture and if you just put it in a very simple way data structure is a way in which data is stored on a computer or in memory or in any digital system so simple words sounds very easy right data structure is a way in which data is stored on a computer so it's not a data type it is not a new technology or it is not like a software but it is an implementation that we provide So for example we provide some rules and regulations some set of protocols which defines how the data will be stored and accessed okay so that is something that we specify so physically it does not exist it is a logical entity that is data structures so i'll repeat again it is not a data type like int or char or strings that we have in programming languages it is not a data type it is not any physical entity it is not a actual memory unit or something it is just a specification or a set of rules that we provide so that the data will be stored in a particular way for efficient access and modification okay so now you have a theoretical idea but you're still wondering okay how do i visualize this can we have a real world examples so let's see some example and let's try to relate things to it and now we'll answer the more important question that why do we need data structures so now you have a basic theoretical understanding of data structures we know it is a way of storing data right but why do we need that So again data structure is a particular way of storing and organizing information we've already talked about this so some characteristics of data structures are as follows each data structure allows data to be stored in a specific manner now as we move along in this series we will have different types of data structures which has some different specialities and are used only in specific cases so that's what this point is saying data structures allows efficient data search and retrieval so we'll understand this point as we move ahead in this video itself by taking an example also specific data structures are decided to work for specific problems because each of them have specific specialities specific characteristics so obviously we'll see each individual data structure as we move along it allows to manage large amounts of data such as large databases and indexing services such as hash tables now this is kind of a little jargon for you as of now when we are starting off what you can do is you can just note these points down because these are very important and now what we'll do is we'll try to relate a real world scenario so let's take our first example which is a dictionary now everybody knows that there are thousands of words in our actual dictionary right i don't even actually know the count of words because every time new words are being added now if i tell you to search a particular word let's say i am asking you to search for the word snippets now just by looking at the word you know that the 
word starts from s and then we have sn so you know in the dictionary you will directly jump to that page where the word starts from sn right and then you will search from there for the snippets word now this is possible because in the dictionary the words are arranged in that a to z order right now just imagine if these words were not arranged in that particular order and any word was put anywhere how would you actually search that dictionary of thousands of words you'll start from the first page and you'll go searching till the end or till where you find that word snippets right so that is such a hassle right you'll probably take an hour to actually search for that word but since it is organized in a particular way you can easily find it so that is a real world scenario and data structure emulates that simulates that exact scenario in the digital world okay let's take another example now this is a digital example that is a technological example that is google maps or any kind of maps actually how is a map location being pointed the very basic ideology is we have x and y coordinates we have the longitude and latitude right so once we get that we are pinpointing a particular location so in this case data is stored in the form of x and y coordinates right so this is another way of storing data let's take one more basic example this must be a very common example for anyone who is computer science and it student especially from the database end or even in general who is maintaining some data in excel sheets and that is a basic table so let's consider this is a basic excel table now here in this example you can see we have first name surname and age so this is a table with name and age so this is another way in which data is organized and the advantage of this can be that we can calculate the average of ages if we have a salary column we can calculate the average of salaries we can find out which one is earning the maximum salary who has the highest age so you can perform multiple functions because we have a tabular format here right so you can see there are three different ways in which data is organized in three different formats over here and because of this performing operations or searching for a particular keyword or searching for a particular location has become easy so this feature exactly is what a data structure is trying to implement in terms of the digital world where data is stored digitally on computer systems so i hope you got a very good idea about how real world scenarios work and how data structures can be relatable and now we'll actually see a basic data structure example so let's move to the digital blackboard okay so as you can see on the screen we'll take an example of a array data structure so if you have done any kind of programming language like c++ or java or any general purpose programming language we have the concept of arrays i'll drop some links of array c++ video tutorial or java video tutorial in the video description and you can probably see a card also on the top right corner but basically what an array is is an array is a collection of elements of the same type placed in contiguous memory locations which can be individually referenced by using an index to a unique identifier now this definition might sound a little difficult but obviously if you've already known what are arrays you'll easily understand them and basically arrays are the most simple form of data structure which are predefined provided in many of the general purpose programming languages the other data structures like stack queue and then we have non linear data structures like graph and trees are supposed to be implemented by us by typing some code the array data structure is by default provided to us so now what we'll do is we'll try to visualize an array data structure okay so let's see a diagram okay so as you can see on the screen i am creating an array data structure i'm saying int numbers so int is the data type that is the type of data that this array is going to store in the square brackets i have given the size so this is the size that means this array can store four elements which are of integer data type so this is the syntax of how you create an array in c++ and these are the values so we are declaring as well as initializing the values here in here itself in this one single line so what this does is in the memory so this is the main memory let's assume this is our ram so we have memory blocks right so these orange ones are addresses okay these are memory addresses and we've given this a random number so the addresses are weird numbers this is just for representation purpose so the first address is 1000 the second one is 1004 then we have 1008 then we have 1012 and the reason why this is in a plus 4 manner that is this is in bytes right now is because this array elements are stored in contiguous memory locations so it's not continuous when you are saying continuous it means just one besides another so it should be 1001 but contiguous means integer data type in c++ in many of the systems take up four bytes okay so this is a standard so that's why the first four bytes are kept for the first value that is 10 so the number 10 is stored at this 1000th memory location so this is the memory address then this is the value now the next value of 20 will be stored four bytes afterwards okay so that's why 1004 
So this is 20 at this memory location and you can see this is contiguous which means it's right besides each other after every 4 bytes of interval. And then the last point over here is the index. So the index of array start from 0 and what this index is used for is used to access or modify individual elements, right? So that's what it is given that it is referenced using an index. And obviously it is storing same data type which means it is storing only integers. So 10, 20, 30, 40 is an integer. Numeric value basically, I cannot store strings over here because I've said that it is an array which is going to store integer values. So this is the memory situation behind the scenes what is happening in the memory, okay? Now what are the advantages of this data structure? So just at a generic level, we'll probably cover array data structure separately also or maybe implement it in program but right now we're just trying to understand it. So let's say the user wants to access only one particular value and let's say he wants to access the third value, okay? So in that case, in the program what we can do is we can say numbers in the square bracket we will pass 2. So the array index starts from 0. So the third position will have index of 2. And let's say we want to print this, okay? So we are passing some print function and we say numbers of 2. So directly this value is going to be printed without the entire program searching through this value, searching through this value and searching through this value. The reason is because we directly have the index, right? So let's assume we have one more array. So I'm saying ARR, okay? And I'm going to say it array of 5. And this is a character array, okay? So this is a char and it has A, B, C, D and E. That is the first five alphabets in English, okay? So this is a character array of size 5, which has the first five alphabets in the proper ascending order, right? From A to E. Now imagine in a program, you'll pass a number and you want to print the character representing that number. So if I enter 1, I should be able to print A. If I enter 2, I should be able to print D. Now if we were not storing these alphabets in this array, we were storing it in individual variables anywhere in the memory. What we would have to do is we would have to check all the individual elements or individual variables, right? But now we have stored all of them in ascending order. We have stored it in an ascending order. So we know that for the 0th position, we will always have A. For the 1 position, we will always have B. For the 2 position, we will always have C. So when the user says, I want to print C value. So immediately you can, in the program, pass this index of 2, right? Because C is located at 0, 1 and 2 position. And you'll say ARR of 2 and you'll print this, right? And then you'll get the output of C, right? Now the advantage here was you did not have to search through the first position to the second position to the third position. In the program itself, you can type in exactly which index you want to print out or you can take that index from the user also. So you can see the access becomes very fast. Now let's say we did not do this in the arrays way. We are storing all these alphabets in random variables and we wanted to print E. So we'll first have to go through each and every alphabet, right? And let's say it is taking one second to check one variable. Obviously, whenever the program is going through all the variables, to access those variables, some time is going to be taken, right? Even though visually we are not able to calculate behind the scenes, the processor is going to take some time to access those individual variables, right? So to reach till E, let's say it's starting from A, B, C, D. So it is taking four seconds. Let's assume to access one variable, it is taking one second. Obviously in real time, it is less than one second, but let's just assume. So now you can see that till coming till E, it will take five seconds. But if you already know the position of E, then we can directly pass it and it will take one second only. Now imagine in real world where you have data of millions of records and you already know where a particular record is by its address kind of like a hashing situation, which you've not really talked about, but let's say you already knew that. Then to access that immediately, the speed will obviously increase, right? So this is where these data structures come into picture. Now, this was a very basic example wherein I'm trying to explain that when you're storing data in a particular data structure or in a particular way, which is implemented by a data structure, the access becomes very fast depending upon what kind of usage it is. And then we can also manage the memory properly. Okay, so this was just an example of how a data structure can actually help us efficiently manage memory and efficiently access different data from the memory. Okay, so that's it for this video guys. I hope you've understood what are data structures and more importantly, why we need data structures. And we've also seen an example of how data structures can actually help us manage memory efficiently and store it properly for efficient usage. So in the same way, we will see further more different types of data structures. We'll understand more concepts. And that's it for this video guys. For this video tutorial, I'm going to wrap it up over here. 
let me know in the video comments how this video was if you understood what are data structures why we need data structures and how a real world example can be simulated please do like this video if you actually understood what are concept of data structures share it with your friends this is a really important concept and each and every it and computer science student should know about this so thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys in the next video peace